Hi, my name is Christian Media, and this is my progressive image loading presentation for CAT 230. Okay, on this uh, presentation, one of the things that we are going to see is what is uh, progressive image uh, loading as an introduction. This is a question, right? Um, well, it's a technique to smartly load the images of our AVP or app by demand using small placeholders while the original image is being lazy loaded. Um, this is something maybe you see often on many websites, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, many social networks, even newspapers. And as I, uh, I said here, you probably already saw this effect on medium.com. Uh, those blurry images that being changed by their respective originals. Uh, it's interesting because this saves a lot of bandwidth and helps uh, the user, maybe if he's using a website or like a, a laptop or a mobile device, uh, it reduces and saves the bandwidth that the, the user is uh, using it. <clears throat> so the progressive image loading, this strategy makes the page load faster and using less resources as we previously talked about the bandwidth that the user is uh, using. So uh, as you load images with the original size only after the first render and only what images with the user can see at the moment. So this is inside the navigator viewport. The navigator viewport, you know, it's a portion of the screen where the user can see um, all the other things that you cannot. For example, in this very example, you're seeing the title progressive image loading and this text, but you're not seeing my other uh, anything else. So this is the viewport in, in the website. There are many techniques, of course, and everything has a cost. And we need to choose uh, what is uh, more efficiency. And to choose what is the, the efficiency, we need to think also to have the user in mind. Uh, in this case, understanding you know what is going to be our website, what is going to present, uh, we need to understand also. And we 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 saw this on the week five. Um, many visitors won't go through every single page of a website. You know, they usually the usual approach of a user, you know, is just check uh, several parts of a website, you know, because it's part of their interest. So, if we create, for example, a big bundle file of JavaScript that it can be, you know, very big, like me megabytes, and only one CSS uh, style file. You know, we are going to have everything, you know, not only our website, our style, everything on our structure, if we use it in flex, grids, everything. And we need to think that we have also many platforms, you know, we have mobile, tablet, desktop, you know, and also if we need to print something or not. So in that case, understanding how we are going to present it on our website is good to think also if we want to make a website to load faster, we need to make many small files, you know, many small files for style, uh, small file for JavaScript, depending on the function that our website has, and also in the portions that we're going to show, including images and text also. So instead of doing something bigger files, what we need to do is think first in the beginning what the user is going to see and what the user doesn't need in the beginning so we can load only what's crucial and more important for him. As an example, I'm taking three major examples for progressive image loading. Uh, the first one is the table wash, uh, simple image, lazy load. Lazy load example, lazy load imaging, loading images. Um, it's a technique where you, instead of using the the source app using the image tag is it will be replaced with data uh, source uh, attribute in the markup 
So in the CSS file, the image element uh, with the data source attribute are hidden. It's hidden, so once loaded, the image will appear with a nice fade in effect using CSS transition. So it's not going to be uh, shown. So for, for to do this, we are going to use JavaScript and we are going to use a function where in the function we are going to change and, and find and replace all the images that all the tag that it has data source uh, we're going to replace it for the source of the image of the real one in this case we're going to load all the the images uh, one by one as the user is needing you know here's a very good example um, this is the website already loaded but if we refresh you know for example this is my viewport, you know, the viewport that I'm having right now is where it says demo simple image loaded and until the bottom that it says back to simple images. If this website is not longer, but if, if I wanted to go uh, to the bottom, uh, I'm not seeing anything. So, no. so this is my viewport. This is the only portion of the screen I'm seeing right now. So this is something we need to have in mind uh, when we are working with the uh, progressive image loading and with this example as lazy load uh, images. Another, uh, another good example that we're going to see is um, uh, Robin Osborne progressive and lazy loading. So Robin Osborne suggests a very good one uh, solution that it's uh, based on progressive and enhancement. Uh, in this case, the lazy loading itself, which is achieved using JavaScript, is considered the NS over regular HTML and CSS file. So why we're going to use a progressive enhancement? Well, if you displace images using JavaScript-based solution, what happens if the JavaScript fail? You know? uh, so if the JavaScript fails, so we're not going to have anything. So in this case, he find two basic solutions, you know, um, that it takes into account in the case the broken JavaScript is going to happen. So this is uh, the preloaded images. So here's an example also in, in pen. So it's everything really, it's everything including the code also because it has a JavaScript or it has a script portion, but everything is included in the HTML file, you know. So it's not splitted. Everything in the style, everything is in the HTML file. So uh, it's going to work. So we are not loading any JavaScript file. So the images are loading. The viewport is not seen right now. As soon as we are scrolling, the viewport is appearing. So you can see the other images. And uh, the third one that I think this is the most uh, popular, and this is like, as I said in the beginning, Facebook uses this, uh, Medium uses this, Twitter uses this, um, a lot of newspapers, a lot of big websites use this technique, the um, buckler technique or the blurred image to high res image solution. So what you have here in, in the beginning is that you have a preview image that it's tiny. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a 20 pixel width uh, compressed image, highly compressed uh, Im image file. So the file sometimes and most of the time it can be less than 300 bytes, you know. So it appears constantly to give an impression that it's fast loading. Uh, so the real image is lazy loaded when required. So this is the, per the technique of the progressive image loading. Um, this is a great solution, but it's also complex because um, it requires HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. And what the code is going to do is it's going to load a, a lightweight portion of the website, you know, uh, using containers, you know, using placeholders. A placeholder, you know, um, I, I, I will try to, to show you uh, what a placeholder is, you know, because it has a, a better example on, on what you need to see. 
let me let me show you. Well, one of the things that the placeholder does is showing you what you need to do, what you need to see. Um, okay. So what you're going to have as a placeholder, you know, is as an example here, you're going to see that this is the website, but the image here is not loaded, but the content is loaded, you know. So you're going to see and you're going to understand as soon as you're moving ahead on what is the, the, the website you're trying to load, you know. I have many, many, many examples on, on progressive loading. So this is the placeholder example I want to show you, you know. This is how Facebook works, you know. They have this portion, the placeholder for the text, the images, and also other portion of the text. They create a wrapper to, to contain everything, you know, in the CSS file. They add a fancy animation, you know, just to put and, and have the, um, the background, you know, this is the the box where you have the the cover page on Facebook and then other portions of the website, you know, and you can you can select, you can move around. So this is a very very good technique because it helps to understand how you you work with the website, you know. So the um, the dependencies that you will have it will be only working on modern world, world browsers, for example, from Internet Explorer 10 plus and up. Um, it also use uh, JavaScript and in some cases, it will require other third party tools, for example, Node.js or Re React. Um, but in, in the basic one with HTML5, CSS and JavaScript, you can make it. Um, so the example that you're having to see is you have a blurred image and then you will have a high resolution images i have two examples here um, and i will put the links also uh, in the post when you can see the progressive image as a demonstration how it loads and what you see when you're navigating the website so this is a very common effect that you see on many on many sites as I said in the beginning, it looks easy, but it's very complex. And as soon as you have more information on the website to show, uh, it's beginning to be more and more complex. But as a technique, it's very good and very useful because it helps uh, to improve the performance on the website. And you're giving the user also, also the option that if he don't want to see something, he's not going to see it, you know, because he's going only to see what the viewport is showing, you know, what the portion of the website is loaded uh, at the time. Um, I hope you enjoyed this um, presentation as I did uh, creating this and learning about this technique. Um, I invite you to also to read, uh, I will share some of the content that I have to prepare this and thank you.